Harry Croto is the uh, Francis Epps Professor in the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry at Florida State. He was awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1996 for the discovery of C60, but Mr. Fullerene started the Vega Science Trust in 1995 and most recently started the Global Education Outreach in Science, Engineering and Technology so that he could call it GeoSet, obviously. Thanks a lot, and thanks for the invitation back to the West Coast. Um, I think the war's been going a long time, and it's still not won, and I think it's the main war that there's ever been. Um, and as I say, it goes back even before then. So welcome to the USA, the unenlightened states of America. Um, there's a book, Common Sense. I haven't read it, but I don't think we need common sense anymore to survive. And one example is I think science has been so effective that it's hoist on its own petard. I think uh, just one example from my particular childhood to give you an idea of how things have changed. This is my Furtlander camera. I had to ch uh, put it in, in the dark. I had to work out the exposure meter, change the iris settings, f focusing was an issue, unloading in the dark, put it in there, put them this in, hang it up, print it, do all this. Uh, hang it out and then I got a picture. It's hard to believe that that was me, I know. Okay, but uh, there you go. But today, today, that's all it is. And just imagine all throughout all our technology that sort of thing is happening. And so what has happened, I think dogma has filled the gap. Okay, well, the unrepresented states uh, if we look at Sweden and Norway and these countries, about 46 50% of people are basically agnostic or atheist. Uh, Britain actually is just below there on the around 31%. But where is the USA? Must be there somewhere. Yeah, there we are. And I think that's a serious issue for the USA, as I'm hoping to show you. Norway, um, well, Norway's probably got the most um, uh, atheistic country, but also has the lowest crime, and so there are issues there as far as um, morals are concerned. As far as politics are concerned, are we represented? No. This is a rundown. I don't know quite what the International Church of the Four Square Gospel is, but anyway, there's, they have one person on. I'm sure we're bigger than that outfit, but nevertheless, unrepresented. The judiciary, well, you all know, it's really heavily weighted towards religion at the present time. What about TV? Well, there's so many God channels, I have no idea, um, but 1,600 television and radio stations. Those are the issues that we face. Fox TV, there's a wonderful article in Mother Jones many years ago with a wonderful statement, as you see, about Murdoch. He didn't pay a penny of a tax in the UK. He's a brilliant, uh, astute financier, but he's very happy with his newspapers to actually slate people who are on the dole in the United Kingdom. Anyway, in response to the fact that um, many scientists do not believe in God, I understand 92% in the U.S. National Academy, this is incredible statement. Isn't it strange that such intelligent people have a problem with faith? This is the person who apparently made that comment. Star Trek is an interesting one. Uh, Gene Roddenberry was really a humanist and atheist, very strongly so. And it, this came through his programs whilst he was alive. And the rational spirituality was a very important aspect. And uh, he was sort of an evangelist for humanism. It's changed since he's dead. The next generation starts to bring in mystical and religious issues and is treating it in a very, very different way from what, the way it was treated before. The mega churches. Well, here we have Austin's Lakewood Church, 72 million a year. Bought the compact center, five floors, two waterfalls. This is the congregation. There's a kids' life uh, center, a facility for 25 million, designed by former Disney staffers. 76 million a year, 1,600 off from every member of the congregation, and they're asked to uh, give 10% of their gross income. The church's greatest expense is TV. Airtime buys 22 million last year, broadcasts and it shows to more than 100 markets. How many science channels, we ask? What about banks? Bank of America, they loaned at least 25 million to Austin to build that mega church. It's a great deal for the bank, tax exempt initiative. No tangible product offered, so there's no risk. 
the congregants all bank, uh, bank with Bank of America. This is a great deal. But no wealth creation. Just imagine what a disastrous effect that sort of uh, investment is on the, Brit on the US an, uh, economy. And this is what's coming in the future. I think there are, everywhere you look, there's a problem. Social infrastructure, Obama's concession to faith-based programs, his willingness to extend unconstitutional faith-based diversion of tax dollars to religious institutions begun by Bush. It's basically religious pandering. And the same is happening in the USA. The undermining of science. Well, let's look at this man, Heller. Okay. Uh, Heller, in the Times, uh, online, said that Professor wins the prize for a maths link to God. His theories do not so much offer proof of the existence of God as introduce doubt about the material existence of the world around us. Well, here he is getting his money from the Duke of Edinburgh, and he's wondering whether the money is actually in there, I presume. Whether it's... But why it's dangerous is that you see on the website, Professor wins a prize for maths link to God. A Polish priest and mathematician has won the world's richest academic prize for work that shows how maths can offer circumstantial evidence of God. How pathetic. How stingy. I mean, he obviously has got a cell phone to God. Surely he deserves 1.6 billion if he's got his cell phone number. That's a big issue, okay? 1.6 million is trivial if he actually had a mathematical link to God. The Templeton Prize, who is actually making a decision on this? Well, about the big questions, okay? The laws of nature, I think that's what the Nobel Foundation was trying to do in the universe. And questions of nature, love, gratitude, and forgiveness, and creativity, that's obviously not necessarily cool. Heller focuses on non-commutative geometry and groupoid theory of mathematics. I know what group theory, but it's probably been groping and hemorrhoids. I don't know what groupoid theory is. Which attempts to remove the problem of an initial cosmic, cosmological singularity at the origin of the universe. Well, let's look at who is the judges. Social science and the humanities. His beatitude, um, patriarch of the Romanian Orthodox Church. Sarah Oakley, professor of divinity. The human genome, Francis Collins, may be a scientist. Professor of philosophy, professor of psychiatry, author, theologian of Templeton Prize winner. Swanee Nathan, National Commission of Farmers. Are these, any of these, possibly able to judge groupoid theory, mathematics, and these things? Well, maybe Walter Thuring, theoretical physicist. Maybe. Walter Thuring, what do we find? Explores the theological and philosophical, philosophical implications of 20th century discoveries in physics. Okay, essential reading apparently traces God in the laws of nature. Templeton Foundation Press. Francis Collins, the grim writer. Here we are, the language of gods. Well, I think Fra uh, Sam Harris has written and read this book and can tell you a little bit more of what, what is in that book. Education. Beverly Slough, I, some of you may know that I was heavily involved uh, for the National Academy of Sciences in the problem of Florida teaching. Um, Beverly Slough says, the standards should fl be flexible enough, flexible enough to, for students to seek all points of view and draw their own conclusions. The Academic Freedom Bill, promoted by the Discovery Institute. What she says is, anybody with half a brain can see that natural selection takes place. But to make the great leaps from fish to man, the fossil record doesn't support that. Well, maybe it needs a whole brain. You never know. In fact, a teacher came out, a science teacher in Florida came out to me when I said this and said, I have you know, but I use the whole brain that God gave me. I said, okay, how old is the Grand Canyon? 5,000 years old. The science teacher in Florida. Issues all the way. Florida senators. This fellow, Senator Wise, went to see Expelled over the weekend. How many of you know of the film Expelled? A few of you do. It was a compelling documentary and addresses the crux of what the bill is about. Senator Major uh, Senate Majority Leader, Senator Webster, on Darwin's theory, he said that the word theory means just a conjecture, a mere scientific speculation. That's the issue with him. Louisiana is down the two. A number of states have been considering, considering the academic freedom bill, which singles out evolution for special criticism. It was enacted by the signature of Bobby Jindal, and here is happy Bobby having signed it. Ben Nevis, chief sponsor of the bill, heatedly denied the scheme is intended to smuggle religion into the classroom. He is a deacon at the Memorial Baptist Church. Maybe, who knows. 
Well, Margaret and I were heavily involved in this in Florida, and we put an ad uh, in the newspaper pointing out that this girl in three weeks was cured by, in 1942 by penicillin and that it may return because bacteria are evolving into forms that are resi resistant to penicillin. The public are, as we heard in the previous talk, really irrational on this issue. They just do not understand it. It's, it's ignorance and irrationality at the same time. 